So there is a very important uh, trend. Uh, uh, there's a very important new trend taking place in, uh, in verification. So the chips today are, of course, they're huge. Uh, the chips are billions of gates, uh, and, and that is, uh, is increasing the complexity of the verification. But beyond uh, the scale of the chips, the verification complexity is also being determined by the architecture of the chip, basically what goes inside the chip. So one of the big differences in the chips we have today compared to the chips that we used to have before is, is for example, the explosion in the number of untimed paths in the chip. Uh, and, and one of the reasons for untimed paths in the chip is, is because of the large number of asynchronous interfaces. But untimed paths are also coming, uh, are coming into the chip because of, of uh, the use of uh, timing exceptions uh, and, and because of the use of complex reset schemes. Uh, and the reset paths are many times, uh, they are not uh, considered an STA. So uh, the explosion in the, uh, the number of untimed paths, the, f uh, the fact that the verification of a chip today is not as much about the verification of the, the basic functionality of the components, but in ter uh, it's more about how the components interact with each other. So the complexity of verification is in the protocols which are used to have the components talk to each other. And that is a big change from what uh, verification was about earlier. Uh, and also fundamentally, uh, the fact that it's a billion gate chip means that it cannot be designed by one team. The, uh, the development of a chip is a, a true integration of, of components to create the system. And so, so by nature of that, it is a distributed design process. Uh, and all of these things are creating complexities in terms of how, in terms of putting out a chip uh, uh, that functions correctly, to put it out on time, to put it out on budget. All of these things are new things, and these are new trends in verification. And, and, and uh, real intent, basically, its charter is to address the verification of SOCs in the context of these new trends. So meeting these challenges is actually pretty hard, and, and it's hard for a couple of reasons. Uh, the basic scale is, of course, making it uh, uh, really difficult for simulation uh, and static timing analysis to keep up. Uh, so as we all know, uh, uh, a processor speeds uh, they have stagnated over the last five to ten years. Uh, and as a result, uh, uh, simulators have found it difficult to keep up with the complexity of the chips. The number of vectors you can push through in simulation on a bigger design is a challenge. Uh, and so as a result, uh, 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 a lot of times uh, it becomes necessary to prototype a chip using FPGAs or to use a, a specialized hardware accelerator to do the simulation and so on. So that is, uh, is one of the ways in which uh, verification teams are, are trying to uh, meet the challenges in terms of uh, the scale of chips today. But the fundamental difference uh, that I pointed out earlier between chips today and the chips earlier is that the complexity is being determined by what is in the chips. Uh, and that is very hard, uh, uh, the kind of complexity being introduced by that is almost impossible uh, uh, to meet using uh, uh, the conventional and incumbent tools like simulators and ST. And a great example of that is the verification of asynchronous crossings in a chip. Right? Asynchronous crossings in a chip, uh, uh, they lead to failures which are sort of at the intersection of the functionality and the timing of a chip. Uh, a simulator only handles the functionality of the chip. The static timing analysis only does the timing. There is, uh, uh, there's nothing in the incumbent verification processes and that is able to handle that intersection in an efficient and a deterministic and a comprehensive manner. So that is where a, a company like Real Intent comes in. And so Real Intent's, uh, uh, a clock domain verification tool, asynchronous clock domain verification tool. About five, ten years ago, it was a nice to have tool because the chips of that time had maybe two or three clock domains. Uh, and push comes to show uh, that these chips could be analyzed through manual review. 
uh, uh, that luxury is not possible anymore because the number of clock domains in a complex SOC it can number in the hundreds and the number of crossings in the tens of thousands. So the only way to really meet uh, the challenge uh, that's posed by that complexity is to have a customized tool that addresses you know, that specific verification problem. So asynchronous uh, clock domain verification is a great example of that, but there are a number of other problems um, uh, uh, in the verification space which can only be handled in this manner through a customized solution. Uh, and, and that is one of the ways in which uh, 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 the verification teams today are, 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 are sort of meeting the, the complexity challenge. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and real intent uh, has been at the sort of the forefront, it's been a pioneer in terms of, of trying to identify these kind of, these kind of new failures that happen in chips uh, and in terms of providing solutions to sort of to meet the verification requirements uh, in the context of those failures. And so uh, I think, uh, I think it, is, it is actually fair to say that without the kinds of you know, static and custom, uh, custom verification tools that companies like Real Intent have provided over the last 10 years, uh, it would have been difficult to, uh, uh, to sort of meet uh, uh, the Moore's Law mandate. Right? The chips would not have scaled up to the sizes they are today. They would not have been able to be as complex as they are today without the kinds of tools that, for example, Real Intent is providing. So like I said, a, a number of, of the, the new failures that we see in chips today, uh, they, cannot be, uh, they cannot be verified for uh, using the incumbent tools like uh, uh, a simulation and like um, uh, a static timing analysis. Uh, and so you need uh, uh, a static and customized tools for them. And asynchronous clock domain verification is an example that everybody understands. It is a, a sign of requirement and you need a static tool for that. And, and Real Intel provides that. But in addition to that, uh, static verification tools are needed uh, to manage your timing constraints. Uh, the complexity of timing constraints has increased uh, 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 tremendously over the years. Uh, and a part of the reason is that, of course, the chips are bigger, but also because of the fact that the modern chip, it needs to be designed in a distributed manner. The, the design process is, is required to be a distributed design process. Uh, and so uh, developing constraints you know, for an SOC that is being designed in that manner is, is, is non-trivial. So you need static tools to make sure that uh, uh, the timing constraints, uh, the timing constraints you have for your chip are, are, are written correctly, they are consistent with the chip. Uh, the timing exceptions that you're using are correct in the context of the functionality of the chip. Uh, and there are other problems like that. So for example, a, a new problem that we are seeing today is, is in the context of X's in your chip. Uh, 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 and X is basically an unknown value and a simulator is limited in terms of how it can handle uh, uh, the effect of an X in the circuit. So in some situations, a simulator can be optimistic. It can, it can turn an X into a zero or one where it should not. Uh, in other situations, it can, can propagate an X in uh, situations where a circuit would propagate a zero or one. Uh, and that causes errors in simulation. Uh, and so it is, it is a problem with simulation. And so fundamentally, uh, it needs a static solution to address it in a comprehensive and an intuitive manner. So uh, the examples of the problems, uh, the problems we see today that require static solutions are things like asynchronous clock domain crossings, the timing constraint verification, exception verification, uh, the analysis and correction of, of, of situations arising from X's in your uh, design, uh, and there are many more like that. Debug is, is very important in the context of the chips today. And the reason for that is twofold. One is that the chips are so complex uh, that navigating a failure in the, the context of the scale of the chips today is, is obviously a, a difficult problem. So software has to help the verification engineer get to the root cause uh, and navigate through this, uh, this complexity. 
The other reason is that <coughs> the kinds of failures we see today, so for example, the failure of an asynchronous clock domain crossing or the failure of an exception or the fact that a flop is not initialized, all of these failures are sort of sort of corner case failures which have to do with you know, specific, uh, uh, a sort of very narrow situations in your design. Uh, and so uh, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, difficult uh, uh, for the user uh, uh, without some help from the tool uh, uh, to go from a situation where there is a failure to the root cause of the failure. So the software has a very important role to play here in terms of, in terms of identifying uh, uh, the root cause that is, is causing this, uh, uh, this corner case failure. And the fact that actually the very interesting thing that is happening today is that, is that as we uh, said, a lot of these, uh, a lot of this verification is happening, uh, is happening uh, using uh, uh, static verification tools. Uh, and, and, you know, static verification tools, basically the sort of implication of that or sort of uh, the related to the fact that you can use a static tool is that the formulation of the problem uh, uh, is, uh, is very precise and the, pro uh, the verification is being done in a, a very precisely scoped uh, 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 sort of model of the design. Uh, and, and given that you're solving a very specific problem, it sort of helps uh, uh, in terms of extracting the important debug information uh, uh, once a failure has been found. So software has uh, the challenge and the opportunity here uh, to provide uh, the meaningful and intuitive debug information to help the designer or the verification engineer get to the root cause quickly. So uh, uh, the debug is, is very important uh, and a software has a role to help in the debug uh, and the fact that we are solving uh, these narrowly scoped verification problems in a sort of an analytical manner using uh, a formal and static uh, techniques, uh, it makes it possible to provide this kind of debug information to the user. So as we solve the first order problems, uh, uh, the problems that used to be second order problems, they become, uh, they bubble up to becoming first order problems. And a great example of that is, is, is in the context of, of the verification of asynchronous and clock domain crossings. So today, uh, uh, the signing off of, of the RTL for uh, the correct asynchronous clock domain crossings is, uh, is mandatory. Every single chip that is taped out, it has to be signed off using a static verification tool for asynchronous crossings. So now the fact that RTL is clean, what next? So what happens is that actually what a lot of uh, uh, design houses are noticing is that even though the RTL is, is CDC clean, uh, that doesn't mean that your netlist is going to be CDC clean because uh, uh, the synthesis tool is not aware of the fact that certain uh, transformations which may be done for optimization to reduce the, uh, 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 the number of literals in your design or, or for some other timing purposes and so on, uh, is going to actually reintroduce a, a problem on the untimed path. Uh, and and uh, so what a, a lot of customers are coming to us with is that, that the RTL was seriously clean but they found a CDC problem on the netlist. And the typical situation that happens is that uh, uh, the synthesis tool, it introduces some reconvergences on the asynchronous crossing. And an asynchronous crossing uh, uh, path is an untimed path. Um, uh, and uh, the fact that there is now a, a reconvergence on it, it creates the possibility that there's going to be a glitch on an untimed path. So, so I said earlier that uh, the designs today are now, now seeing an explosion of untimed paths and, uh, and you have to make sure that all of these untimed paths are squeaky clean. You cannot allow uh, a, a situation like a glitch to happen on an untimed path because it's not going to be, it's not going to be, it's not going to be analyzed using STA. So the next thing is, is to make sure that all the transformations that are happening, uh, that are happening downstream and from RTL. So transformations introduced by um, uh, a synthesis, uh, they don't 
to introduce a problem in your design. Uh, and so and so we have a tool called uh, a physical CDC and and the job of this tool is to is to make sure that uh, uh, the paths in your netlist are completely glitch free and it does a formal analysis of those paths uh, and it makes sure that uh, that reconvergences and the path do not uh, do not cause a glitch or multiple drivers converging to some gate uh, uh, they cannot cause a glitch and so on. And then another example of, of what is next is uh, the analysis of the reset scheme on your chip. So it is um, um, a lot of chips today you know, they have the so-called you know, software reset. So it used to be that uh, uh, the reset on a chip only happened at you know, power up. Right? So you reset everything once and, and then after that everything uh, the chip basically operated in the functional mode. Uh, but today, what is uh, uh, the reality has changed, and 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 what's happening is that the parts of the chip can be shut down internally uh, uh, through the power management logic on the chip, or it can be shut down, or the configuration can be changed uh, through some sort of a configuration processor that is a part of the of the system. So so blocks on the chip can be turned on and off. Uh, dynamically, so effectively uh, uh, there would be flip-flops on the chip which get a reset uh, in a dynamic manner. Uh, and a lot of these paths that go through the reset input of a flop are not going to be timed. Uh, and just like you know, clock domain crossings can introduce metastability in uh, 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 the, uh, the paths downstream, a, a reset path that is untimed uh, it can also cause um, a metastable situation in a downstream flop if, if the downstream flop is in a different reset domain uh, relative to the, uh, the upstream flop. So, so analyzing these things and, and making sure that your reset scheme is, is not introducing uh, uh, functional errors, it's not introducing metastability and so on, uh, is becoming a, a, first order, a first order requirement. Uh, and in talking to a lot of customers, I've seen that uh, uh, the lack of the verification tools, you know, for example, to verify your reset scheme, uh, to verify that uh, the X's in your design don't affect uh, the correctness of your simulation, uh, the lack of verification tools in those contexts is, is causing these design teams to use ultra safe design methods. And the, uh, the implication of these ultra safe design methods is that, is that they're giving up on some of the optimality that is possible, um, uh, the improvement in the performance or a reduction in area and so on that is possible. Uh, uh, they're giving up on that. So, uh, so what we would like to see happen is uh, as for design companies to get comfortable using tools like the reset domain crossing verification uh, uh, a physical uh, uh, a CDC, uh, uh, the use of X verification tools and so on, so that uh, uh, they can bring in optimizations that they are uh, uh, that they are giving up on today. Uh, and a good example of an optimization that they're giving up on today is that uh, a, a lot of design, uh, a lot of design groups, you know, they um, uh, they have software resets in their system, but uh, but because they cannot verify uh, the reset paths, they use a synchronous reset you know, for the resets that come from outside the chip. Uh, and, uh, and the use of a synchronous reset is uh, suboptimal in terms of area, in terms of power, and so on. Uh, and, and, and with the availability of a tool like a reset domain crossing verification tool, uh, uh, that these same groups can now start using asynchronous resets and make the flops uh, smaller, they can reduce the delay on the, uh, on the critical paths and so on. So the Israeli market is extremely important uh, 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 for real intent uh, as a company that is, uh, is trying to push the envelope in terms of, in terms of verification. Uh, it is great to see a concentration of engineers in a, a small sort of geographical uh, 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 location, uh, and, uh, and 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 there is both a concentration of uh, startup companies in Israel that are pushing the envelope in terms of uh, 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 the design technologies, uh, and of 
and of course um, uh, there is uh, a uh, Israel is a destination for multinational corporations that are looking for a concentration of of, of design talent uh, and experience uh, and companies like Intel and and other companies from Europe have been present in Israel for a long time and a number of new companies have set up major operations here. So we at Real Intent you know, see Israel as a market uh, that both that both needs our uh, cutting edge products and uh, it's also a market from which we can learn in terms of what the next uh, generation of requirements are going to be uh, in the context of, of SOC verification. So. I'm glad that I'm here uh, and, and I'm glad to be interacting with, uh, with all the experienced people here.